A majority of people experience at least one traumatic event during their lifetime, but not all are affected long, long term. Approximately 8% of Americans experience PTSD in their life, and women are twice as likely as men to develop PTSD, according to the Nebraska Department of Veterans. This is equal to about one out of nine women developing PTSD, according to PTSD United. PTSD stands for post-traumatic stress disorder, and it is a disorder that is often misunderstood. Many associate PTSD with those who are involved in the military, but that is not the only people who suffer from it. I did a project about this topic in my psychology class last year, and the information that I learned made me realize that PTSD is far more complex than a lot of people think. So because of this, I'm here to tell you more about post-traumatic stress disorder, what exactly it is, and a number of different treatment options that are available for the patients. Brian O'Shea, who is a clinical director and consultant psychiatrist, defines PTSD as a symptom that manifests itself sometime after a significant trauma or psychological stress has occurred to a person. In 1980, the American Psychiatric Association added PTSD to the DSM. And in this slide, you can see a picture of the cover. And the DSM stands for the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which is essentially um, a very large book of the different, and it, it's a large book that lists and classifies a different number, a number of different psychological and mental disorders. Even though it has only been around for 36 years, or has been recognized as PTSD for 36 years, the symptoms have been around for much longer. I think one of the reasons that a lot of people associate PTSD with those who are involved in the military is because these military traumas are what triggered the discovery of these symptoms. According to the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, psychological symptoms date far back to the Civil War, and over the years, PTSD has taken on a number of different names. Shell shock, combat stress reaction, and battle fatigue are all names that were used. Well, what causes post-traumatic stress disorder? The Nebraska Department of Veteran Affairs defines PTSD as a psych psychiatric disorder that follows a person's exposure to near death or very traumatic experiences. This includes military combat, natural disasters, terrorist attacks, accidents, or sexual, sexual or physical assault that occurred to a person either during childhood or adulthood. What is interesting though is that the development of PTSD is extremely subjective, so that means it is different from person to person. For example, June and John Doe were both involved in a serious car accident. They both sustained injuries, but thankfully they both lived. It was a long road to recovery, though, for both Jane and John. Unfortunately for John, though, he developed PTSD after the accident. This was because he was the driver, so he had a hard time coping with the events because he felt he was the one at fault. The recovery was easier for Jane, though, because she did not develop PTSD. Even though they were both involved in the same exact accident, how each of them perceived the event was very different. The trauma threshold is unique to each person, which means that some people are more affected by traumatic events more so than others. For a person diagnosed with PTSD, they must exhibit certain symptoms for a period of time. The National Institute for Mental Health says that in order for a, period, in order for a person to be diagnosed, they must show all of the following symptoms for a list of one month. And the criteria include one re-experiencing symptom, one avoidance symptom, two arousal and reactivity symptoms, and two cognition and mood symptoms. So essentially a re-experiencing symptom is kind of what it sounds like, but it is when someone has a nightmare or flashback of the time of the trauma, and then an avoidance symptom is also pretty, kind of sounds like what it is, but it means that a person stays away from a place that reminds them of traumatic event and so they're trying to avoid the triggers for their symptoms. Um, this also includes some feelings of emotional numbness, guilt, worry, and also depression. And then an arousal, arousal and reactivity symptom means that a person is easily startled 
often has difficulty sleeping because of this and is also easily angered by some things. These symptoms often have a negative effect on a person's concentration, and this includes the cognition and mood symptoms. Things like a door slamming off, things like a door slamming would startle a person with PTSD. This is often because they associate this noise with one that occurred during the trauma. So for example, a war veteran may be startled by the, the noise of a door slamming because it often sounds like a battlefield noise, such as gunfire or bomb going off. Such symptoms can have very serious effects on a person's social life and also on daily functioning. There is a lot of hope though because PTSD can be cured naturally over time or um, with recovery after the trauma has occurred. <clears throat> Unfortunately though, a third of the people who develop PTSD have symptoms for three years or longer according to the National Center for Biotechnology and Information. This often leads to secondary problems for the patients. Many people who suffer from PTSD for longer periods of time develop these secondary issues. Secondary symptoms result because they're, it is a way, uh, it is developed when they are trying to deal with the primary symptoms of PTSD. Not only does it affect the daily functioning of people struggling with PTSD, but it also leads to things like job loss and serious financial issues. Many also struggle with relationship is issues and completely, completely withdraw from any social situation as a result. More serious issues include depress depression and substance abuse with drugs, alcohol, or caffeine as well. The substance abuse is a result of the patients who try to cope with their symptoms. After time, though, they become dependent and that dependence eventually leads to an addiction. Other secondary issues associated with PTSD include a variety of anxiety disorders or a number of other medical conditions like reduced cardiovascular health. The dealing with a mental disorder like PTSD is very difficult and straining for everyone who is involved. Fortunately though, there are a number of different treatment options available. An article by Schwarz and Kraut discusses different treatment approaches. According to them, therapy is most effective for patients the sooner it is and is also more effective when it is brief and focused. The main goal of treatment for PTSD patients is to return them to the normal lifestyle before the trauma took place. Psychotherapy, which is talk therapy, is common to help manage and develop coping skills. Different medications like an antidepressant are also helpful as well. Another option is cognitive restructuring, which is helpful because it brings order to the bad memory. So this is a video that I have that pretty much gives like a brief overview. train dogs to guide people with a trauma out of a nightmare because we not only help people who cannot see but also those who've seen too much. Okay, so this is an example of an organization that has been able to help those suffering with PTSD. In the video you can see that the traumatic event occurred on the battlefield and so um, the dog is able to recognize when the soldier in this instance is having a nightmare and so organizations like this have been very effective for those suffering with PTSD. Um, PTSD is an issue that affects a large number of people and it is more common than a lot of people think. It's hard to imagine what it would be like to deal with these symptoms on a range of basis though. There is hope though because so many effective treatment options are now available. After hearing my speech, I hope you're all able to gain a deeper understanding of what post-traumatic stress disorder is and what exactly it is.